Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. We have in this video a tale of a bit of white knighting by Beryl Flynn and of a bit of reverse ferreting from Mary Black. Mary Black opened her beak and said things and on reflection realised that perhaps she shouldn't. And so she needs to change the narrative. She needs to get the old men in black neuralizer out, flump, look into the light and then tell us what we ought to have thought she said rather than what she actually said. It's, uh, it's fun to watch. You can see it happening in front of your eyes. The narrative is changed. What you heard is wrong. And a new narrative is being laid down because obviously she doesn't want to destroy what she set out to do. Which is a shame because I think she already has. And it doesn't matter how much extemporaneous bullshit you are about to hear. We all know it's far too late for Mary. Let's take a look to see why this woman and her hateful gob have got her into far more trouble than she can handle and why the party are riding to the rescue. Here goes. Now we are a political channel and for that YouTube dislikes us because it does not like political channels. We get pushed down in the algorithm and by you hitting the subscribe button it lifts us up and it spreads the word and we can bring that word to people. Also occasionally it unsubscribes people randomly so if you are someone who's previously subscribed just check you still are. But as I say if you're not then hit the button, join us, spread the word and let's find out what's truly going on behind the scenes because in the amalgamation of everything we see you can just see the rot and chaos of the SNP and it is marvellous and especially as this being an election year you won't want to miss it. Now we have to address elections because this story ultimately is about an election. It's an election that is yet to happen and we don't know when but it's undoubted that it must because Mary Black has to change what you have heard her say because she's realised that what she said is very very damaging and so you know let, let's go out let's get the whole party around to say she didn't say this she didn't mean that this was the context and blah 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 and there's a lot of blah blah of course and it's all coming from the SNP because they know they have to they have to fix the Mary Black problem. Mary Black was slating former SNP MPs and not current colleagues insists Stephen Flynn, as he jumps to her defence, as he's probably ordered to jump to her defence. Uh, now, of course, she was saying that uh, all, her com all her colleagues were claiming some of them were too comfortable living in London and working in Westminster. Who could she possibly have been relating about? Who do we know who's very comfortable where he is in his new love nest, seeking a position in the Lords, etc.? etc. Well, not only of him, of course, not only Blackford, but others as well. So she said this and what she said, she was talking in the current. She was talking when you hear the original that she was speaking in the present. Not those were. She said, are ah, too comfortable. These people are too comfortable, not were too comfortable. But it then looks bad. She wants to leave. She's leaving Westminster, but she wants to go back up to Scotland and run as an MSP. But then why would the party pick her if she's so scathing about the people she's working with, her own colleagues at the time? And so they have to fix this problem. I don't want to work with her if that's what she's going to think of me. Am I too comfortable? Blah, blah, blah. And so they've got to fix this image. And so they've said, well, change the narrative. It's not the ones who are working. It's the old one. It's the old guard, the previous ones. Well, of course, there weren't that many previous ones. She wasn't there long enough to know them well. So it's quite clearly an erroneous argument based on a load of old tosh, isn't it? Anyway, the Westminster leader was quick to defend his deputy who sparked a civil war within the Nationalist Party for claiming some were too comfortable living in London. As he backtracked on this and insisted she was talking about colleagues who were not MPs anymore. And we know straight away... That's rubbish. It's absolutely rubbish. But he's got to defend this because he's been ordered to. They want her back up as an MSP in Holyrood. Although she's going to have to be given a safe 
uh, parachuted seat. So some party wonk who's been working their balls off for years will be told, no, sorry, you were up for it, but we're not having you anymore. We've got Mary Black. We've got to think about the party. And then, of course, the locals will look at that and go, do we want this strange, smelly, Kit Kat chomping woman to represent us? Probably not. Stephen Flynn has claimed that his deputy Mary Black was attacking former SNP MPs and not his current colleagues when she claimed they were becoming too comfortable with London life. And there's the thing, becoming. Again, they not they had become in the past, but were becoming, current, present, the ones today. So the argument is spurious. The argument is wrong. The argument is a load of bollocks. The Paisley and Renfrewshire North representative is quitting Westminster this year and labelled the atmosphere toxic. Yes, but now she's quitting. It will improve remarkably. Uh, she made the atmosphere within her own party toxic through her claims about some in the group. See what I mean? She's the toxic one. She told Times Radio, I've seen fo folk uh, who thought that uh, would have been the first one marching to the border with a Claymore, but now absolutely love being in London. Current. Uh, I wouldn't have expected that. I will not specify if they are current or not. But yes, I've come across ones where I've thought, mm, you appear slightly more comfortable than I think you should be. But the fact is, she, the fact that she's not saying whether they're current or not means, yes, they are current, isn't it? Otherwise, she would have said, oh, there's past ones in the past. But that's not the case. Also, the other verbs that she's using, becoming, not had become. Despite her comments specifying now, absolutely love being in London, now being suggesting they are currently work as an MP, Mr Flynn was quick to dispute this by a clever use of inventing a new language. He only became an elected MP in 2019, two years after Miss Black, and led a coup against Ian Blackford. And nobody was unhappy to see him go, although he did hang around a bit like a bad fart. Uh, he told the Daily Record that he never doubts the commitment of his MPs, despite the fact that his predecessor as SNP Westminster leader would like to join the House of Lords. Well, of course he would. He's got his little love nest. He's in London. He's all loved up. Although the thought of him laying there on the chaise lounge, naked, but for a posing pouch, glass of champagne in one hand, little rose in the other hand, as his new squeeze wanders through the house in her very expensive Janet Rager, before slipping that off to reveal her sexy Victoria's Secret stuff, as he sits there foaming at the mouth, licking a Greg's pork pie in anticipation. It's just, it just turns you, doesn't it? Gives you, gives you the boke. Anyway, uh, he said, in the comments that Mary gave, this is Flynn again talking about Mary. I've got sidetracked. Sorry about that. And I don't want that image to stick in your head. Anyway, it, talking about Mary, he said, in the comments that Mary gave, she doesn't state, as far as, far as I'm aware, whether that was current or former members of Parliament. She didn't explicitly say it was former. And she said becoming... And now, read the words, Stephen. We're not stupid. We know you think we are stupid, but we are not stupid. He said, I think that's a point that was perhaps lost on some commentators. Don't patronise us, dick. He said, when it comes to the work of my colleagues, I never doubt their commitment to working hard on behalf of their constituents, whether that's in the chamber or whether that's back home. OK, little sideline, another tangent, but related is that there was a private member's bill a couple of weeks ago which was asking for the right to have the decision on whether to have a referendum removed from Westminster and put up to Holyrood. Flynn and Black, the leader in the House and the deputy leader in the House of the SNP, did not even bother turning up for the debate. So that's their commitment to the cause. So again... He thinks the man is a liar, but then he, he does, doesn't he? He is such a liar. Old Fester. Anyway, he says, I know when it comes to the cost of living crisis and the likes of Gaza, neither of which are within the remit of the SNP in Scotland. He said it's SNP MPs who've been making positive case and who've been trying to make sure Scotland's voice is heard down here. I'm sure that all Scots MPs, regardless of flavour or colour, are making sure that their voice is heard down there. Do not, what's the word, Conf compound SNP as being Scottish. SNP, if anything, is anti-Scots. The SNP is the one damaging Scots. So don't make the SNP out to be Scotland and the voice of Scotland. 
it most certainly isn't. Anyway, Miss Black's comments called a rammy among the nationalist group as Joanna Cherry hit out at her and demanded she either resign or apologise as it wasn't appropriate for her to be attacking her public uh, colleagues in public. She's done neither of these publicly because, of course not. She's an obnoxious shite anyway, who, um, a bit of a soap dodger, likes to wear a dad's suit, is speaks a strange language that even most Scots can't understand if the truth be known, uh, and likes to present herself as being down and uh, you know one of the one of the people down at the roots, you know, hanging out with the Utes and all that. She's a middle class, you know, privately educated, lovely, you know. Anyway. Mr Flynn was quick to insist that all was well among his colleagues, claiming they were all united, which we know they're not. We know they're not. That's bollocks at all. Anyway, he said, the group spoke about that internally and the group has responded positively. We're united in our focus to ensure Scotland's voice is heard down here and we return as many SMPs, MPs to Westminster as possible. Now, I will refer you to Craig Houston, who did uh, a video yesterday. Uh, and he said something, and I've, I've been advocating this for some time, about um, tactical voting and how to break the SNP, simply because they need as many people in Parliament uh, as possible, because they rely on that funding. Um, what, Craig, what Craig didn't mention was the short money. I did put a note up on the comments of his video, but he, he failed to mention the short money. But then the short money is not something that necessarily people know about but it is also an important consideration. But the salaries they have to pay over, as, as Craig said, very wise of him to say that, but also that short money. If we can vote them out and get fewer SNP MPs in, as Craig said, we will bankrupt them and then they can all go. And Mary Black won't have a seat because they won't be able to afford to run a campaign. That's the secret now. Get them out and force the likes of Mary Black into getting a real job. Although who on earth was employer she doesn't come across as professional she doesn't come across as educated she doesn't come across as someone that you would trust um she's too much of a gobshite for corporate work i suppose she could go back and scoop chips again that'll do her uh anyway um he teamed up with miss black on a joint ticket for the smp westminster leadership in december 2022 defeating key ally uh, surgeon ally uh, alison thewlis and stuart mcdonald but just months later, Miss Black decided she did not want to stand again at the next general election. And I think also half of that was because a lot of people in her constituency decided that they didn't want her either. And I think she saw the writing on the wall. Uh, she even threatened to resign from the party if our office manager Robert Innes failed to be vetted. Now, here's the thing. He did fail vetting, right? He wasn't picked in that. He failed vetting the first time round and she threw a hissy fit and said, OK, we'll let him in and let's see how it goes. Look at the people that have failed. No, sorry, look at the people who have passed the vetting. Look at the awfulness of some of the people who've made it through the vetting process. And then Innocent failed. Or Innis, Innis failed. You have to wonder how bad he truly is to fail the vetting. Stunning, isn't it? And there's Cherry. She, don't, she doesn't like black. She hates black. Anyway, the Edinburgh South West MP said... Oh, this is Jerry saying she needs to live up to her responsibilities or give the post over to someone who will. I'm not comfortable at Westminster, but the SNP is not an abstentionist party. And if Mary wants to change the policy, she needs to put her work in to do it. And in a veiled attack on Miss Black's lack of actual achievements during her nine years in Westminster, she added, it's easy to stand up and make a speech, but it's harder work and hard, but it's harder to work hard behind the scenes and to create alliances to achieve reform. Mary Black has done nothing. She stands up and she gives gob shites and that's all she does. She's a gob, but she's got no intelligence. She's got no achievements. She's got no hard work ethic. She's got nothing. And yet there she is, expecting to be parachuted in as an MSP on some poor schmucks and whatever um, constituency she can force herself on like some cancerous tumour. I'm coming up. Well, that went on a bit longer than I thought, but hey, I'm not wrong. They are desperate to get her up there. They're desperate to change that narrative. And so they've resorted to lying, to spinning, and to basically saying that whatever you thought you heard, you didn't. Why? Nobody wants her, really. She's popular within the party, but only, only with a little bit of the party. Not all the party. Some of the party loathe her. 
Anyway, I'll stop there. Thank you very much for watching this very long video. And if you've made it to the end, well done. Thank you for the watch time. Till next time, stay safe, stay well, and I will speak to you later. Bye.